this has the looks of a very long and fascinating series. Yeah, London, definitely conserve your energy. This may go long, especially post 30 minutes is when these teams get bloody. So 0 to 15, kind of dull, especially the flash rules, averaging like, what, one kill uh, in those phase of the game. Yeah. But then later on, if you go post 30, then you get these massive AOE team fights that we're waiting for. And right now, actually, I'm not surprised though. Let's see the Flash Wolves bans right here. The Callista was first picked every single time Origin could have for Niels. And Elise is actually something that Flash Wolves didn't even play. Yeah, and we also heard the analyst desk talking about how Blue Side was a decent sized advantage in this game. Uh, and also these bans, it's mainly because the Red Side has to ban the Mordecai's and the Gangplank. At least that's what we expected in these games. What we weren't expecting here is we thought the Jinx, Jinx was actually yeah. going to be banned because NL has been so dominant on it, averaging 971 damage per minute on Jinx, which is the most of anyone at Worlds by far. Yeah, that's mostly due to the fact that these games go long and you have a lot of AoE defense, but even with that into account, he still does significantly more damage than anybody else in similar yeah. roles on that Jinx pick. So Origin should be building an anti-Jinx comp if they leave it open. Well, interesting, they didn't remove Tom Kench either, so we expect that to come through at some point here for Sword Art. And as far as stealing the Jinx away, we don't think that's very likely either. And now might yeah. pick it up this round, but even if Origin had the chance, Niels is not exactly a prolific Jinx player. Well, we know that Flash Wolves is willing to early pick the Jinx because it's been so dominant for them. And we're pretty sure that Niels can play Jinx. It's just not anywhere near his top played in Soul Queue. On his main Soul Queue account, he had something like 12 Four and Jinx eight. games. Yeah. yeah, and as a clarification on that stat we just mentioned, 52% more damage per game NL deals than the average Jinx at Worlds. So he's really been proficient on that champion. With that said though, the Gragas is great at displacing Jinxes in team fights. Flash Wolves did their scouting and Soas probably surprises them here with the early Darius pick. They haven't played it so far in the tournament. So Top laner Stake obviously has played both Darius and the counter matchup Nar, so he's proficient in this matchup, but it is a new pick from Solas. And on top of that, as far as being red side, Origin has last picked their top laner two out of three times. It's something that seemed likely for Origin, especially considering the perceived mismatch between Soaz and Stake. What this means is we're probably going to see Peke actually get the counter pick. Looking at this draft, this is where Mithy usually goes for a Thresh in a lot of these situations, so it would actually be surprising if he locks in that Alistar. Well, surprise. It, surprise? Yep. Tiny surprise. Tiny little bit surprise. I feel like Alistar's really big to be a small surprise. I feel like he's one of the biggest surprises you could go for in League of Legends. Yeah, well, surprisingly, Alistar's Last dropped line. off a substantial amount here at Worlds. And we're combo. talking the build of the champion is a big Minotaur. We're you know, already physically? going down that road. Yes, we are, Jat. Physically, he is a big surprise. Uh-huh. All right. Well, here we go. Oh, Flash was the last few champions. No surprises here. The third LeBlanc game of the tournament for Maple. His proficiency for Assassin at 7 out of 7 Assassins so far at Worlds. And Sword Arts Morgana also standard. A little bit surprised not to see Tom Kench, but Morgan is. I think Origin's already looking for a lane swap with these picks because the bot lane matchup, it plays so easily. Morgana Jinx plays so easily into a melee support with Sivir. You never get punished almost. You can yeah. pretty much control the tempo of the lane. And then in that top lane, you have the Gnar counter pick to Darius overall. So. I would expect some map movements at least to scout out where the lanes are settling in for Origin. And Flash Wolves has got to be really happy with this draft so far. They pretty much have nothing but comfort for the yep. people that are playing these champions. And not only did they get comfort, they also got counter picks in a lot of situations. Nar is seen as once he gets ahead, a counter to the Darius pick. Morgana has been spectacular against Alistair so far. Worlds is one of the reasons for the fall off. And counter picking a mid lane against the Whoa. ball isn't something that is actually that easy to do. Unless the Nivy is the counter pick that no one ever knew about except for Froggen. So <laughs> this is going to be a fun one. Peke running the old graph. Yeah, uh, counter picks in mid lane. Nivea, 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 Nivea. <laughs> when you get to Nivea flying, we'll counter pick there. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. So, Origin, the only bands of picks they got to really spend here is that third Lulu ban of the first pick, Darius. All they've done as far as options was limit stake down to a NAR. Everything else, Flash got to pick whatever they wanted. But I mean, look at Origin. They have such a beefy front line. Darius combined with Gragas and then Alastor support. Then that requires two heavy damage dealers. I don't think yeah. Nivea Sivir really suit that role. They can ramp up a lot of damage over time in fights, but it's rough. Yeah. Well, even in Nivea, you have to kill twice. If we're trying to think of Maple, who has carried multiple games on the Blanc so far, our group stage, blink, like destroying someone at the start of the team mm -hmm. fight, really hard to do here against a Spell Shield, an Egg, an Alistair, a Gragas, and a Darius. Like, he doesn't have very many good targets to hit. Yep. And in that way, Origin has picked a pretty smart team. And that's what's weird about those, then, is then it 
puts even more onto NL shoulders. Maple can't burst almost anyone. Okay, we know that one, but you still got this Jinx who's putting the di highest damage per minute of the entire tournament, so maybe it's a lot on NL. We'll see if that happens because, guys, we are getting ourselves into game one of the quarterfinals, and you, as always at home, are part of the experience. Tweet at Lolis with the hashtag FWWin or hashtag OGWin. Let us know who it's going to come down to. Of course, this is a best of five. The team has to destroy three Nexi over the course of the series to win the whole thing. So as we open the first game in London, let me hear you one more time. We are into game one of the quarterfinals. And also for the fans as well as the viewers at home, make sure you're conserving your energy for this matchup. So don't do this. They didn't get if the you're memo. behind your te hey. television right now, don't shout. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, this is such an interesting matchup because Flash Wolves and Origin, while they did win in the group, uh, there's a stat called Bloodiness, which is the combined kills and deaths in a game. Within the first 15 minutes of the game, the Flash Wolves have averaged 1.6 kills or deaths across all of their games in group stage, which is by far the lowest of any team at Worlds. And Origin is the third lowest at 5.2, which is substantially higher, but still incredibly low. So as far as the first 15 minutes of the game here, uh, we were really wondering what the stylistic mismatches were and how they were going to play out. Yeah, definitely looking at just how slow Flash Wheels approach the game. They don't go for any kills. First spots don't happen until probably after 10 minutes, if I remember correctly. They don't take any first towers. They were a very good reactionary team overall. If you make a play, they have a good reaction, but they are very much so not proactive at all. So this could give you a very stale early 10 minutes. And when we've been watching their games from the group stage as well, Flash Wolves has some negative CS differentials, specifically Stake. He's usually down around 10 CS, whereas Soaz is up around 7 CS. So is Niels, and Peke's been holding his own. But Origin has substantially more deaths in the early game because they're playing their lanes very aggressively and have been punishable by ganks, which will be the question of whether Flash Wolves is aggressive enough to take those opportunities or if they're just going to get bullied by Origin and lane. And that's what's so interesting, just to sort of show you guys the, the level of sort of over-aggression. Uh, Niels, Mithy, and Soaz are combined 3 and 18 in the first 50 minutes of the game. But as you guys mentioned, Flash Wolves don't take many early kills. So the question is, will Karsa show up in these lanes and punish that over a breath? Yeah, they have those CS differentials positive with all those deaths, which shows yeah. you how well they're actually CSing. All right, both bot lanes now heading into the laning phase. Both got a camp, so we could actually see more explosiveness than we've been used to. So far in the tournament, very few lanes have actually taken a camp. And L and Sword are already level 2. Miffy's looking for that experience. He's caught out in the brush here, so we're going to eat some damage and be zoned up that way for a bit. Wow, yeah, and Sword Art actually did have binding. It was down for a short time, so Miffy was able to walk up for a bit, but they both match level 2 here. Yeah. So that means Miffy's likely going to skill heal and just end up playing sustain, unless he goes for combo and some aggression. Oh, he's going in. Goes right in. Double knockup in. And L's force drop and ignite is on. Black Shield mean nothing. There is already a first blood. There is a time where Black Shield was down and it got abused. This is such a bold move. Whenever you bully an Alistar early, you force him to skill and heal. Mr. says, none of that. We're going in. And they go on NL. The hard carry for late game flash was finally blood already. Who needs heal on Alistair when you can kill somebody? Level up, heal that way. Yeah, that, <laughs> that is so huge for Origins lane, especially with the standard laning phases. Flash Wolves just overstepped their bounds. They were a little bit too aggressive. And now the question is, will it get turned around? Karsa would be in position for a gank. But Amazing's coming down. Mithy does not have Flash. He just burned it now. He's running away from a binding. And Karsa will end the knockup. Now there are multiple TPs available. And the team is coming in. Karsa now on the wrong side. A Flash body slam by Amazing gets the second kill for Origin. And this has been such an improvement here for Origin. When we saw them fall apart towards the end of the last day of group stage, a lot of it was in the early ganks and not matching teleports yep. with the likes of LGD or KT. Here they have more teleports than Flash Wolves, so as match stake, Peke could not be matched by Maple, and it ended up just kind of drawing them off of it so that Origin could turn that around. Spectacular start for Origin. Absolutely incredible here. So you talk about the fact that your lanes are supposed to be winning anyway. So was in fact already ahead of stake. The teleports got canceled on both sides essentially here, but now just everyone's doing incredibly well. Even Peki's ahead in lane. Yeah, he, as these as these lanes progress, stake should pull ahead of Soas. And honestly, if you play it 
10 times, and Ellen Sorda should win that lane 6 or 7 times, but they just got outplayed. They didn't respect the fact that Mithya had combo. He didn't even have to use his flash, so he preserved his flash, which allowed him then to turn that gank around. Uh, Karsa got counter ganked by Amazing. Oh no, my. Dark, he he can again. break the black shield. No, he can't do enough damage in time. Gotta wait for the barrel. Yep. Yeah, they, they needed the to wait for the Gragas barrel to pop, break the black shield, because it's only a rank one black shield on a 21 ability power early game Morgana. Or space out your combo. Still worth 84. Kill the black shield with your W, wait, yeah. then knock. But it's it's tough to do that on stage. Yeah, speaking of that though, players will naturally make more mistakes as the stage gets bigger because the pressure increases throughout this. Flash Wolves beforehand wasn't necessarily expected to win that group. They came into the second day with one and two, maybe not as much pressure on them, but now against Origin on this bigger stage, they were confident in that bottom lane fight and overextended, which is one of the reasons they now have to play from a hole. I'm actually very interested to see how this mid lane matchup plays out. LeBlanc into a Nivea. Seems incredibly hard to land that Q, and I want to know what Pekka's going to do build-wise overall. If he keeps this very slow build, or he alters it into more of a teens oriented build, so he's defensive against the LeBlanc, and has more wave clear and CDR to just keep the pressure up. Because if Maple's allowed to roam, he could balance out that early advantage that Origin have acquired so far. Yeah, and the only game we have to judge this off of is when Peke played Anivia against TSM in their first game at Worlds here, and he went the very slow build. Yeah. Peke did a catalyst into a tier of the goddess, but it was against TSM, a team that Ooh. doesn't make many moves early on in the game. And as far as the scouting report goes, Flash Wolves has not taken much initiative either. They generally wait for the other team to engage on them and then are very good at reacting. So I would actually expect maybe Peke uh, works in a little bit of magic resist, but I'd expect the slow build of Anivia here as well. Yeah, Rod of Ages into Athens is a possibility, or even early Athens, uh, if you farm enough, you can go into Goa afterwards. And so as he's continues to have this uh, push pressure in the top lane, which we don't expect to see in this matchup, and honestly, Karsa should have probably swung around to uh, even that out. Yeah, one of the biggest benefits here for Origin is because they were able to get those kills early, Amazing and the rest of Origin have been able to get some wards deep within the jungle of Flash Wolves. You can see a ward right in the perfect area between the Gromp and the blue buff, which is why Soaz has been so safely able to push up there, not to mention the pink ward he has in the river. Very few areas of attack if Karsa actually wanted to stop that push. And Amazing's already doing it some more. He's got the Raptor buff on him, so he knows there's no ward spotting this in vain. He's making sure everything's the way it needs to be. And he's up on the top side in case there is some kind of dive to be had. Looks like that's not the case. There was Niels on the bad side of the trade. His support is not around, so he'll take it a ton of damage. 200 HP, and now comes the teleports. Peke and Soaz both have them. Oh They're both God. in already. The wall missed, but NL loses his flash as soon as he gets it back. Soaz lands the upper hand. Two more attacks will do it. Sword Art's oh. only dead. He's got to bleed to death. NL makes it four deaths, and Origin are incredibly far ahead. A complete opposite of what the stats have shown us. We prepared for this match. We prepared for a very dull early game right now. Amazing, though, has to it's get away from Maple. Looks like we brought our Prenzel Sharpness because it's certainly anything but dull here. Amazing trying to run out. Maple puts in the Ignite. W will kill him. Under the turret he goes. Flash Wolves get their first kill of the game. Maple's going to have to do a whole lot more of that because everyone else on the team is actually losing pretty substantially. Love the teleport usage by Origin. They are absolutely capitalizing on for Flash Wolves what is a surprisingly aggressive duo lane. Letting them play the Jinx, overpowering them when they push far, and punishing Jinx for the low mobility. In all of group stages, all games combined, Origin got a total of three kills. In this match, they've already exceeded that. They got four, four early game kills here. We see Niels, he gets engaged on, but he can wait. And then he can wait for Mithy to come in and then double teleport is allowing Origin to punish this play. This is the first time really we've seen in group stages that they can punish plays with proactive teleports. When we watched the VODs, Origin was either second to teleport or not teleporting at all, or putting themselves in positions where they could get outplayed by a teleport. This time, they're mastering that summary spell. And every time Flash will try to fight the bottom lane, something goes wrong for them, overstepping past Alistair, getting TP down and behind, and not respecting the double teleport at all is really hurting the Flash Wolves here. Yeah, the three kill stat you just mentioned, Krepp, was in the first 10, ten. minutes yeah. of the game throughout all of group stage, so they have surpassed that with a very active early game thus far, and Flash Wolves hasn't responded well. 
watching all Flash Wolves games during group stages, you know, they've always actually been a slow team. Second slowest average game time in the LMS. So it's kind of out of character for them to make aggressive moves. Normally, they're very good at reacting to aggressive moves and punishing, but that hasn't necessarily been the case here. We'll see how many turrets they can trade back to keep this game close. Well, you're going to see that trade <clears throat> not going to happen just yet as the bot lane does get cleared away for a little bit there. Maple looking for an aggressive play. The stun will not land, though. Peke doesn't get the Q out in time. Mid lane turret's taking plenty of damage, but bot lane still being sieged upon. And the three-man group is far too much for amazing to deal with. Flash Wolves get their first turret of the game. We also have to mention how hideously far behind NL is. He's gone an Avarice Blade and a Long Sword, whereas Niels has completed the BF Sword. Sometimes you get the BF Sword to pickaxe mismatch. This is a BF Sword to a Long Sword, sword to a very small sword uh, mismatch. <laughs> That's true, comparatively. NL has to be able to swap around, but honestly, where does he actually go? It is so difficult to push against an Anivia with a blue buff in the mid lane. And if he goes to the top side, they lose even more dragon pressure and pressure on them. Now this is what Origin very often does well, is where they farm well in split lanes. They play the map on three lanes. What they do poorly though, is that they die very often oh trying my. to farm. Well, he should have the egg. Plenty of damage there on to Peke. Maple will not take the double damage frostbite there. And uh, yeah, you're seeing Maple, the, the one bright spot, the only guy with kills, not even an assist on it. Still trying to do work for Flash Wolves. Well, you can see exactly where they're trying to attack. It's very hard to attack an Anivia, but if Maple can take Anivia back to base, then they would have a chance of pushing mid lane. Luckily for Origin, they picked an incredibly potent wave clear composition, which is kind of just a really good way to stall and let Anivia hit those late game power spikes, because even if Anivia cycles down, you still have Sivir, two of the best per position wave clears in League of Legends. Looks like with the mid wave cleared away, and even though Darius and Anivia are back in base without teleports, a three-man dragon attempt here for Origin. There aren't many good wards for the Flash Wolves, and there's going to be no contest. And this is usually where the Flash Wolves trade a turret. Whenever a team goes for a dragon, they would switch to the other side of the map and get a tower, because they're so far behind in this game already. So was really waiting for NL, who's so far behind his opponent. Flash Wolves call cross map, and Origin are just soaking a farm in every single lane, and that deficit is only going to get bigger for the Flash Wolves here. Jeez, look at that, the preemptive early choppers, and NL runs backwards. He is afraid of Soaz. Well, they are both Flashless here. Should be totally safe for this Darius. Flash Wolves are at least keeping up in farm. You look down at the scoreboard right there, and actually NL, despite being 0-2, and two, actually still has more farm than Niels. So the farm game is keeping it up. It's only an 1,800 gold game. That's actually not that big for what the scoreboard might have told you. Flash Wolves, Flash Wolves have the, a, a fighting chance. Problem is, though, that Maple has to look for these assassinations. And as we pointed out in Champs like already, it is incredibly hard to kill somebody in one go. Maybe twice you can get them, but getting through the Anivia, getting through Spell Shield, Getting to the Gragas and the Darius' health pools is just almost impossible for Maple right now, especially if Origin is putting decent vision on the left side and the right side so they don't, don't get surprised and get outmanned. It's going to take a lot of time. And one of the favorite combos for Flash Wolves during group stages was Maple nearly bursting someone to death and then NL killing them with the Super Mega Death Rocket. So having NL in a deficit this early on in the game is so crucial as far as the win conditions go. Meanwhile, Mithy taking up plenty of aggro, walking back safely, and a beautiful explosive cast pulls Karsa back into the team. It's actually Flash Wolves losing the summoner spell. Well, same with Mithy, though. He did, he did ignite. use ignite on the Karsa, which is kind of what prompted the Flash. Yeah, Mithy, this pick makes sense in the sense that Mithy, in the first 15 minutes, died seven times in group stages overall, just trying to work, trying to get that vision in. If you have Alistar, you can avoid a lot of these deaths by just popping your ultimate, so... You can see it. he's very confident going in because he knows he always has a backup plan. He still has his ultimate available to do this again. And with a tanky amazing nearby, they can just force the vision in and keep the game on their tempo. Yeah. Watch what kind of moves can be made. Maple already wanted to make a play onto Mithy. Not going to land the chain. Headbutt Pulper has got him underneath it. Spell shield is a flame chomper. Nothing else done. Yeah, so you can really see Flash Wolves trying to shrink the map here. They have NL and Maple consistently in the mid lane. Now it's going to be on Origin, because Origin typically doesn't like playing shrinked maps to 1-3-1 one, one, and draw the game away from Flash Wolves with a Nibia wave clearing in the mid lane. The longer Origin can play this game, the larger their lead will become because they're essentially able to farm all three waves, whereas Flash Wolves is kind of only safely able to farm two. They are actually in a good position to do that, and now they actually have the vision to back themselves up in those positions. Usually, 
when we see Origin go for very early 1-3-1s. One, one. They lack the side lane vision, and that leads to a lot of their deaths in those side lanes. But this time, because they were ahead a little bit, Soas has a Twinket Ward right there. So for one minute, at least he'll be relatively safe. But we need to see that backed up by more Sidestone Wards placed by the jungler and the support if they want to continue using this strategy. And the thing is, Origin don't have a lot of those deep wards near the mid lane. That area can be collapsed upon fairly easily, actually. And, and you also got to watch the side lane matchups here. Sivir's not exactly a good one-on-one -on -one versus LeBlanc, but that's the matchup being had on that top side of the map. That's going to make it difficult for Niels to really push well. Yep. Yeah. Amazing did just pick up a Sightstone. 14 good. minutes and 30 seconds into the game. Uh, on average, he's picked up his Sightstone at 14.50, which is the second slowest in the group stage. So even with this lead, you can still see the tendencies are staying fairly true for Origin. Mm -hmm. And if that is also true for the rest of the game, expect a lot of split pushing and hopefully better warding for Origin. Because as Krepo mentioned, that has been how they have made mistakes, is they're trying to draw the game to the outskirts, but they are getting punished pretty heavily for it. Well, with a lot of their right there. over in those side lines. Yeah, absolutely. Niels, sidestepping some more. Pink Ward and Green Ward traded there. You got to see a second ago that top lane was being pushed by Maple first, and then Niels had to collect that wave. So top lane, up until the team roamed up to cover this Sivir, Maple was getting the push lead there. And the game has stalled out. The same gold lead has kind of remained stagnant now. Mostly due to the matchup in the bot lane. Even with an advantage gained by Teleport, Soas can't push it home because he's still in a counter matchup. And as the game goes on, especially, say, 15 to 25 minutes, that matchup gets the most pronounced because that's when Nar starts picking up these items like that Frozen Mallet, and he can keep his opponent at bay. That was exactly the item power spike I was going to talk about, and he completes <laughs> it right now. So you can actually see, because of this, Origin is starting to group up more towards the mid lane, and they're trying to force it onto Flash Wolves a little bit. I will say that Flash Wolves, we made the joke about Stake absorbing in the top lane because he can take a losing matchup and not make it matter that much. Flash Wolves is a team has probably been the best absorbing team at Worlds because they've had to play against so many teams who have beaten them in the early game. Both games against the Koo Tigers. Koo Tigers had immense pressure, and Flash Wolves has been able to take these little micro sacrifices to get them to a point in which they can reach power. And that Frozen Mallet for Stake is when they start winning the Split Push War and is their window back into this game. Yeah, the Flash Wolves are actually comfortable being this much gold behind because they only led once at 10 minutes and that was only a 66 gold lead. And then at 20 minutes, they're usually behind. They've only led like twice in, in the group stages. So if this doesn't get too bad right now, they're actually comfortable playing this game. Just keep your eyes on NL, his positioning with the help from Sword Art, if they can turn a fight mostly around the Dragon. An objective that Origin actually doesn't like fighting around too much. It's true. Oh, you speak about uh, Avian's you know, with dragons on the ground and the Nivian and whatnot. I want Did to point we speak out. About avians? We are now speaking about, a dragon. about avians. We are now speaking okay. about avians. Avians is the topic. Yes. Ahead. I want to speak about a really quick mechanical thing that Pekka does not know about. When you deactivate Glacial Storm, it actually does an extra tick of damage. Then you can use that to last hit, do a minor bit of burst. Pekka doesn't know about this. He's actually waiting until the Glacial Storm regular tick damage kills minions, then deactivates it and actually wastes a little bit of mana doing that. I did not know about this. He got it about six months ago. Meanwhile, top lane fight, Soaz! Feeling good about basketballs, orbiting his opponent, but Karsa now showing up as well, and it's gonna be quite hard for the Darius Medicine to land one tick of the heel, but Sword Art out of land, the ulti and stakes in there as well. The entire team is top lane as punishment for Origin taking a dragon. That is a lot of people in the top yeah. lane, and once again, this is an example of a very small sacrifice Origin makes, the second dragon, as a window to get back in the game, because if they can now use that pressure to take the top lane turret, They'd be even in gold, but Peke, with some nice cross mapping, Ooh. keeps the pressure up in the mid lane. That's a good wall, but they don't go... And that was alone down under that turret. Amazing doesn't go for the dive. And this is something we've seen from Origin. They play the map open, and if you hit them somewhere in the top lane, they will take something from you in the bot lane. The problem is they don't predict the play from Flash Wolves here very well. So us could have backed off if he didn't have the vision. He could have respected the vision a little more and just taken the free dragon But Origin, very often they want too much, and they have to end up getting punished somewhere on the map. And it ends up being a trade of turrets. Top lane outer goes down thanks to the Flash Wolves gank. The origin persistence in the mid lane knocks one down for themselves. We do have a late tier coming out for Peke, so he is still planning on scaling up quite slowly. That is a recent tier, by the way. Rod of Ages was first yeah. and is nearly completed. It's not super, like it is around 200 stacks, so once he's able to upgrade it, he'll get it. But 
yeah, 200 tiers at 19 minutes out of 750 <laughs> is really, really slow. But we mentioned earlier, average game times. Flash Wolves average 41 minutes, 53 seconds. Origin, 42 minutes, 24 seconds. The 16th and 15th slowest teams at Worlds thus far. So I think he's going to have the time to let it complete. So what you're telling me, Jad, is a 30-minute Raj of Ages is OK in this matchup. It'll max out <laughs> if you're baiting it off. Well, Seraph, he already has a Raj of Ages. But yeah. Well, yeah, they stack. There's almost no unique passes in that item. Six oh. row of the dream. Overall, we saw a very explosive opening of the game with NL and Sword going aggressive and getting punished twice. One by an outplay, second time by teleport. But as we've been talking on a little bit, the game has been stale. As I say that, we may see some action though. Flash, headbutt, Pulverez comes in, oh. Maple goes back oh. in! Whoa, the massive outplay! Jumps back, Juke Smithy, there's nothing else to do. Beautiful by the Flash was mid laner. In case you didn't notice, Maple is really good at LeBlanc. Uh, basically, <laughs> 2v1s right there. Mithy landed the CC, but he's like, well, what do I do? My AD carry's not close enough to follow up with anything. Niels dies in the side lane yet again. So, uh, Origin honestly needs to shrink this game down a little bit. Flash Wolves is killing them in the top and bottom lane. And Origin needs to work around the Anivia and the team fighting that they have built up in their composition. Origin just needs to improve their warding right now. It was really good at one point, and that's very often when they place all these trinket wards down, because Origin have a tendency to place a lot more trinket wards as opposed to just sight wards. But then once that vision drops, they, they find themselves in the dark with no really follow-up play. And that's exactly what's happening right now, too. They're, just, yeah. they're not making much plays with vision, and then, yeah, Niels gets caught here. He can disengage, but they want the outplay. Yeah, I mean, the fact that the chain landed as Mithy engaged is really what sentenced Niels to death right there, and he used the spell shield earlier on. Uh, that's now the second time Origin has died in either the top or the bottom lane. Um, in the group stages, as far as where the teams had their deaths, it was a really cool stylistic difference. Flash Wolves only suffered five deaths in the top or bottom lane as far as positions on the map, but Origin had died 29 times there. It feels like Origin is continuing to push these sides and, and look, usually suffering some casualties. Flash Wolves finding it yet again, but there is double teleport. Spell Shields, the first distortion. Trying to get Two away, a bunch of bars come through, and here comes everybody. Peke trying to get away from this one. Car uh, Karsa half health, knockup comes through, but it doesn't do all that much for him. Niels forced to run and hide. He's almost out of health there. So as the front lines forced to run for the rockets. The zap hits so as though, which means Maple can come in for the chain. So as will be rooted for another couple of seconds. Here comes the team. Snake! Oh dear! Poaches an egg as Peke goes down, and Flash Wolves take the kill lead. And that's so punishing for Origin because they expended both of their teleports to try and salvage that play and got a negative result off of that. Flash Wolves has persisted to this point and they look to take the lead with this turret kill. But what a fantastic way of using distortion and mimic distortion there from Maple. He passed over Baron into the jungle, doesn't get spotted. Over the crux, he gets behind Niels. Niels only starts running once he sees Karsa coming out. And because Origins have this spread out play style when they use the teleports to collapse, Amazing was actually still in the mid lane. NL was way ahead of that play. He joined, and once he joined, he turned around the tides in that fight. So Flash Wolves, they're planning their plays together. Origin are reacting with teleports, but sometimes you just got to bail out and sacrifice one guy. Yeah, I've, I love what Maple's been doing. Moving through the shadows and creating plays for Flash Wolves instead of waiting for Origin to split push them to death. Again, Niels was out of this fight before it really began. And Peke had to use his flash defensively because they both teleported in on the same ward. And Origin, they feel strong, but they don't know that Amazing's in the mid lane. Poor communication. And Nell comes in. He wasn't spotted anywhere on the map, and yeah, he's going to turn on his fight. And look at the spacing from Maple, too. Staying out of Darius's Q range, Stake now realizes that they actually killed Soas already, so he doesn't need to use his ultimate to secure Soas. And then he just hops onto Peke. Peke trying to peel. So these little minor outplays here from Stake just adapting during the fight. At first, he goes in for Soas, realizes that kill's already. Produced, then he switches to Peke. Flash Wolves pick up two kills. And I want to highlight something that uh, Minor Crystal talked about on PTL this week about Flash Wolves sort of playing to their opponents, playing to level them, playing almost a, a style that works well. Origin love to play these side lane pushes, this 1 3 1. Soaz got kind of picked by stake. Niels on Sivir is never going to survive against LeBlanc, and Anivia's not exactly a great side lane pusher. They're not even the right champions for a 1 3 1 style from Origin here. Flash yeah. Wolves have matchups for all of them. Yep. Flash Wolves has been so good at reacting to their opponents. Sometimes you can use that as a negative because, you know, they're waiting for the other team to expose themselves. But basically, Origin has been 
exposing themselves in those side lanes, and that's where Flash Wolves has been able to capitalize. This game may actually hinge near this next dragon fight because instead of the picks being plentiful for Flash Wolves with solo people off, they are now grouped up with an Anivia around an objective. Will Flash Wolves give up dragon number three, or will they actually try and fight this one? We keep talking about how Origin style is 1v1, but a case can definitely be made to just spread open the map and then collapse with the Sivir and then use that movement speed advantage to make a pick or an engage or a siege somewhere. Because if you look at this composition, a lot of the issues Alistar and Darius face in these fights is getting to their targets. Sivir solves that immediately for you, and then you can really play out these good zone control team fights with Anivia. So they have the tools to turn around a fight, catch out NL, but he's proven to be very position-based AD carry, so definitely yep. interesting to see if this plays out. And as much as we talk about Flash Wolves being a sort of reactive team, they've made a lot of proactive picks. Origin yes. haven't gone for sieges or fights or much of anything, but Maple continually opens the map back up. Dragon's yeah. been up for almost a minute. Origin trying one more time to take it. I feel like Maple's been doing most of the work. He has been the one working in the shadows, and he has been the one split pushing for the team. Backwards chain is not the best way to start this, uh, but they do have a Nivea zoned out. This could be a fight. Attempt of steal for Carson will not happen. Sword down a half health. Black shields himself. So Maple goes in. Chain's only myth. He could re engage his pop seality and flashes to leave headbutt to Mini to go out as well. Sivirot was already popping this timed out, and now Stake will look for a slow one auto attack. Would slow chain Hit Mithy. Him. They're gonna go for this one. The chain will land. Headbutt won't create enough distance, and that will be a kill for NL with the super mega death rocket. And on the topic of controlling this split push that OG does, Rek'Sai is a fantastic pick because you can make your jungler an impromptu wave clear on the other side of the map and just ulti him in. Karsa came in with the tunnel, joined the fight, and once Origin was disrupted, they were too afraid to fight. They felt the need to regroup. And then Flash with gap closes and range CC yeah. punished them. Well, specifically in that fight, Teke was trapped in the mid lane because the push was being threatened while Origin was able to get the dragon. So I actually think they got a decent amount of value picking up dragon number three and only having the one casualty in the Alistair, yep. I think is an acceptable cost for Origin in the long run. Uh, even so, it, it does appear that they've kind of lost control of this game and now their win condition really is uh, more centralized. They need to be able to take Dragon 4 and 5 as well as try and control Fog of War around Baron, of which Origin has really poor ward coverage where they need it right now. Yeah, it showed Flash Wolves a way to win these fights. You really want to repeat the same scenario over where you have Maple on the side picking people off, Karsa going in and then zoning Origin and then picking up the targets with repetitive CC while keeping NL safe. Whereas Origin, they just want to group up get a really good CC chain come in. Gragas and Alistair combine their efforts to really lock somebody down. And then meanwhile, you use your tankiness to your advantage so that Maple can't really go one for one in that trade. From that point onwards, Origin do win the fight. We'll see if that kind of team fight can happen. Then at the front line holds and they can deal with the uh, two and a half threats here. Double teleport is up, but of course, so is Stakes and so is Karsa's ultimate. And keep in mind, there are kind of two teleports per team here as far as matching map movements. A great find and a Peke. Chompers underneath. Not good for the Anivia. Pops the egg and now here comes the follow-up. Has nowhere to run. Eggs don't seem to roll uphill. Peke goes down 7-4 to for Flash Wolves. Binding to chain to Chompers is just no escape once they're getting hit by this first CC. And Origin is just not grouped at the right times to keep this Flash Wolves composition at bay. Yeah, just not respecting the range of these uh, soft CCs following up by hard CCs. Pekka has flash available that he could have backed out. He can also put his ulti down and just walk further away, just to avoid getting hit. But again, NL opening with a beautiful zap there, and then lack of respect for Pekka, it costs them a tower. That's turret number five. Flash rolls have knocked down two of the three. Two, two turrets now in the entire team. Sitting up in the top side of the map now, around Baron, around that recently dead red buff. And lights going on here for Origin. No wards around Baron whatsoever. Yeah, there is an upgraded sweeper on Karsa and on Sword Art. There is still a pink ward in the inventory of Stake. And honestly, Origin just hasn't been in the proper position to get the wards up that are necessary. Amazing has a very small window now, as well as Mithy, to get these defensive wards up around Baron area. Such a critical time. This, this is Karsa. actually, for Flash Wolves, this is the cost of taking that second turret. They think it's worth it, but they've kind of lost a little bit of control of the jungle here, where with the way Origin is being caught out of position, Origin needs to set up shop here and get a pick of their own, because they are getting completely punished by Flash Wolves. They trade the Baron control for pushing the bot lane by stake and also getting a base time for all their members to spend the gold. So in that sense, Flash Wolves, they lose a bit of the map, but they gain some potential momentum down the line. We need to see if they can actually deny enough vision here from Origin. Because Origin, they're fine with losing the map as long as they can sneak in one or two wards on this Baron area and just prevent the Flash Wolves from doing clean Baron. 
Because if they collapse, they have a fantastic team to collapse on that Baron area. This Whoa, is... Hama getting collapsed on right there. Anivia melts Maple, gets another one. 4 0 and 4 for him. Now Mithy caught up, has to pop the ulti, but does he really even get away with this one? Low health does walk out. A lot of ultis burned. Salty. Block. Amazing blocks it. Uh, I think we're seeing here. Flash Wolves on their very comfortable champions. And when we swap sides of the map for the next game, that might be what Origin has to go off of. The blue side is a huge advantage in this particular matchup because of the comfort that Flash Wolves has, more so than it would be for even a normal team. Because when Flash Wolves is at their best, it's on this specific set of champions, especially with Maple on the Assassin, like Maple. Or like like the block, and we're seeing why. And El just took a giant chunk of damage thanks to the Baron, and Peke's TP is up. There is actually room to make a big play because Maple and NL have to leave the map and heal back up. They could conceivably even Baron, and they'd probably get it. Yeah, Stay, Stay can obviously match his Peke there and slow them down. Origin looking for vision here. So many wards though in the area still, so Flash Wolves will play with perfect information. And mid tier two is the target. Origin go for the much safer choice. That does go down. Origin keep the game within 3,000. Dragon up in a minute. The Flash Wolves have shown they have broken this game apart. Nice slow. It's just... There it is. They look for the play in the NL. Black Shield comes in before explosive cast cam, but Soas trying to frontline for the team. Amazing, incredibly low. One last rocket does it. The Stake's flanking. Well, unfortunately, the team can't join yet thanks to the Inhibit Crystallized, so Stake will just buy some time with the Frozen Mallet. Undeterred, though, keeps the CC going towards Mithy, and yes, these guys are going to chase. And Nibia stops it. Yeah, we're starting to realize why NL actually deals so much damage, because his zaps are on point. Every single kill so far has been started with either one or two consecutive zaps landing by NL. That ability is pretty hard to land. He just slows them down just enough that they don't want to flash out because they don't want to waste it. But he can rack up a couple of hits. Then when they do flash out, it's very often too late because they just chase and then he gets the kill. It's the big play though. Dragon spawns up and Origin knows Flash Wolves want it, so they start away at Baron, but missing one sweeper, don't kill the last ward in the pit. Flash Wolves know if it's a bait. It's such a hard play for Origin to set up right now because of the amount of vision they, they need to clear. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, they don't walk in with Mithy. Right now, Amazing would have an upgrade too, but he's been dead, so this is in vision of Flash Wolf. They're can trying feel, to collapse. The they gotta finish coming. it. coming. Amazing can jump over the wall. Who's gonna win this fight? It Amazing. goes to the red team. That goes to Origin. Here's the battle. Karsa alone in front, absorbing, gets dunked. So as is online, so as Maple's down. He's still going. He doesn't get the third as Azonius comes across. He gets some damage on his stake. He That's how you win a game. That's what you do. You just fall just to the wayside throughout the mid game, and then 30 minutes hit. Darius Penakill. Beautiful Zonias by Sordal, but it wasn't enough to stop the power of Noxian Might. 200 attack damage plus. Once he triggered that here, he was hitting the outer ring of his Q to heal up and power tank the game. And instead of trading a Baron for a Dragon, they have their cake and they eat it too. All right, let's watch this again. Amazing comes in, holds his smite here. Barrow, and then smites at the same time. Stay can steal it. And look at Sword Art and where Maple is. They're still joining the smite once it's already yeah. hopped on. Deals with his heal, survives long enough to deal some damage and then run out of the fight. NL is late to this fight, and specifically, Maple actually got picked off. He this wasn't stun? sneaky enough on the LeBlanc. The stun from Peke just to set up Soaz for all of this power. So it's oh actually pulls him out of Miffy's combo. But that, that little stun there coming from the side from Xpeke, that bought two hits that Anel could have done in this fight. Those two hits were enough. If you don't ha land them, Darius on Soas' pick there can chain heal from leading those Q, and then suddenly he stays alive in that fight. So if Peke missed that stun, this could have been an entirely different fight. Yeah, I think this also speaks to the fact that Origin was really far behind. Because after a panic kill, Baron and Dragon, they're still up only 1,000 gold. But I think they do have a better team fighting composition as we saw in that cascaded Baron fight. So now, let's see how well Flash Wolves can repel this Origin push. We're gonna try for it right here. Stun of the Wall will not land. Early Black Shield comes in. Now Maple around the back. Doesn't get much done, but Amazing is overcommitted, and he's gonna get picked up. Carso low on the backside, so is Sword Art. This time, Flash was half an L in the fight from the start, and then they have Maple distracting on the side. So there's two ways to play the fight. Either you focus on one guy blowing him up for the reset on Jinx, or you just make it so that they can't afford to focus on L, and he just has so much backline damage. 
That was a really awkward engagement because as Amazing was going into the initiation, Maple had the flank position. So half of Origin had to go back to respect Maple, and instead they lose Amazing, uh, which is better than the alternate of Maple basically killing Peke and then losing the whole fight. Mithy really trying to keep Maple on the backside. Uh, of course, the ult out of Mithy, but it's a low health bar. Ooh, they nearly catch Peke with the rocket. I think that's push done. Yeah. Mithy's job in this fight is pretty much goalkeeping. He has to keep Maple away, intercept that distortion, either with a W or a Q. He'll do some damage here. Look at that crit, though. It's still a 4v5. Keep in mind, Flash Wolves do not yet have the Mega on our ulti, though, and not enough damage comes out of Maple. Sword Art also missing Flash means no engage, despite the fact that Amazing was back in base off of respawning. And as you said, push done. Yeah. I think this kind of goes to show how far this game is from a natural conclusion. With the Baron buff, Origin couldn't even 5v5 siege a middle turret. Normally, it's the <laughs> inhibitor defending turrets that are hard to take with Baron. The one that they just got pushed back on is the easy one. Yeah. Origin as a team never use Baron to end the game. They use it to break open the base. That's when they take down a lot of these tier 3 towers. But right now, they're having issues even getting past tier 2. Yes. I guess a team that plays late game Jinx has an AD carry with the highest damage in the entirety of group stage, well surpassing any other Jinx players even in that regard. So we go on with this and we get a Zeke later on coming out of Sword Art. NL could potentially start solo carrying these fights. And that is next, you can see the amplifying Tome and Sword Art's inventory. I would bet you that is going to be the incredible AD carry empowering Zeke's Harbinger. A couple thousand gold away from that one. We'll see if it comes in. They're the trying to get that pick on NLE. No, he has no flash. Black Shield in and Karsa front lines for the team. Buys a whole lot of time. Flash the way. Sword Art also buys a lot of room, but Soaz has reached the back line. However, Amazing got picked off. It's a one for zero so far to Flash Wolves. Stake goes back in. He does have the ult. He rebuilds Meganar. Flashes for the slow on Peke. NL wants in. Gets chunked out by a boomerang. Still hitting Peke, though. There's the zap. That's There's it. the hit. He's an egg. That's going to be a two for zero to Flash Wolves. And look at the beautiful zoning. Karsa yeah. goes in with a three-man knockup. Then Sword Art just positions himself as a blocker. Just presses ulti and zone. He doesn't care if they walk out of his ultimate. All we need to do is keep NL alive. And in the midst of all that, Amazing find himself, goes off, and yeah. kill. You could really see how hazardous it can be to chase down NL's Jinx with the wet rest of Flash Wolves being able to protect him. Black Shield, the knockup from the Rek'Sai, as well as the flanking from Maple, plus Frozen Mallet on Stake. He's not really using this offensively. People are, like, Saws is trying to run at the AD carry. Stake's just hitting him with that Frozen Mallet slow again and again, and you can tell it is shutting Origin's team fighting down. Aside from that one, you know, kind of nice pentacle. Yeah. Gave him 6,000 gold <laughs> power play. But even with a 6,000 gold power play, they're still behind seven on the gold, so. And this yeah. is the story of these games. So like it will be the same game two, three, and four, potentially five. We get more explosion post yeah. 30 minutes. This game was action-packed by these team standards up until the first 30 minutes. But by tendencies, Flash Wolves has the bloodiest games post 30 minutes. And Origin, the fourth bloodiest games post 30 minutes. So really, We've already seen a pentakill post 30 minutes. Well, what on. more is in store as these guys battle This is out. in store, because here we go. Sword Art Black shields himself, but Enna will not get grabbed. Maple's around the back, looks for Niels, doesn't get too much done. And now he's zoned out for a few more seconds. Stake is low, turns into Mega Nar, but it's a disengage. Change in approach for Origin. Instead of looking for the back line, they just pick away at these peelers, at these blockers. So they try and get Sword Art to force Force him to use Zonyas or LT defensively to save himself, not NL. And yep. that way, you see Maple try and go for a flank, but he doesn't have the bravado to really combo. He just goes in and out. So not much damage returned from the flash rolls. Now keep in mind, as far as playing a disengaged game goes, we are 30 seconds away from Dragon 5 for Origin. They've managed to control that the entire time. And so if they can set up that line one more time, in 25 seconds, they can go for the aspect. Yeah, right now, Origin's wards are placed around the Baron area. They have triple pink right there, and, but they actually don't have much vision control at the Dragon Pit. So what will Origin choose? You've seen teams trade Dragon 5 for a free Baron and then take their chances at the next one. Origin does kind of hold the cards right here, but they have to be careful that they don't walk into a bad team fight because the death timers could end the game. And Origin, they've learned their lesson. Instead of rushing in into their inevitable doom, They've Looks been like kiting a lot more in these fights, but right now, Flash Wolves are rushing down this dragon. Yeah, and Origin, they didn't have the vision control at the Dragon Pit. They're going to try and trade for Baron, but the timers Baron. were desynced by 10 seconds. So how much Baron can they get, and how well can they run away? Last time this resulted in a Pentakill, 
But Peke is running a little low on his mana pool. He has a blue buff. They're just two there manning it, and it's gonna go down. There's a second there of the game, and here comes the fight. Flash rolls on Dragon One, at least have some stats. Here's the engage. Neil flashes, Neil flashes for an auto onto Maple. A couple of knock-ins come through, and so has wreaking havoc on the sides. Niels is still safe. Peke lands a stun. Sword Art goes down. Megadar does almost nothing, and Stake is the second kill of the fight. It's two for X Peke. But instead of tunneling on Anel and not being able to reach him, they actually take the composition apart piece by piece from the front. Yeah. Origin wins fights whether either they kite and they kill the front line or they get this Baron buff and they can hit the front line anyways. Long death timers too. It is just Sword Art and Stake, mm. but how much can they get off this one? If they pick off Maple or an L, the game could be over, but they finally break the base with Baron number two. And speaking of picking off, if Maple had landed that chain, it might have actually killed off so as it would have triggered the mimicked Q mark right there, but it doesn't happen. It's gonna stay alive for now, but it's only a three and a half thousand gold game. Origin didn't get a lot of the last Baron buff. We'll see what else they can get here. And in these slow late game fights with Leandris from Anivia, we'll talk about that later as we yeah. see this replay again. So Leandris on Anivia is great for tank busting. Darius is also pretty good for tank busting if you're going through here. You could tell Origin isn't actually trying to focus the squishies here. They're just trying to kind of play their own back line and just trade who has more damage. Origin has the better tank line, the better protection. So instead of them trying to dive, they are killing frontline. This is the proper way yeah. for Origin to play the team fights with their very tanky lineup. You don't want to give NL AoE rockets. Even though he was in rocket form, most of his offensive tools... Hang on, Karsa. Nah, most of his offensive tools were used on a single target only, not AoE. And then Peke, if you have to walk over Leandris' ultimate from Anivia, you will take so much damage over yep. time in these rather slow fights overall. And you also want to make it as difficult as possible to flank on the block. When Origin commits people to the back line of Flash Rules, they leave themselves exposed. Now they die. They're gonna go for it. Turek goes down, Silver Ult's in, so has the front State. as well. And look at State getting forced out. He is a barrel away from death. Niels gets the kill, it's a 5v4. A gigantic minion line gonna be hard to answer. Soaz gets a shield, he walks forward. This turret is nearly already dead. Amazing takes a big chunk of his health bar. Rockets come in, that crit would have killed him, but it was only a normal Ooh. hit right there. Another chunk comes through, and now forced to flash over the Anivia wall, but the inhibitor turret is dead and Origin are not deterred. You can see Peke's Leandri's Anivia is doing a number on Flash Wolves. And even though Origin had to kind of make a desperation play to get back in this game with the first Baron, oh, that's a nice Goodbye. pick by Maple. There has been a distinct change in strategy in how Origin plays their team fights that is paying some pretty huge dividends. Flash Wolves not willing to give up, though. That's a big time Rexile. Peke's not there. He would almost need to teleport down to save this now, Carson. Oh, he comes up playing. Right, everyone walks away fast enough that all is well. A death on Mithy, though, is still 35 seconds of Origin having to see the map for now. There's no way they can go for a fight without him. This style that Origin is playing is fine in the current iteration of events. Look at the way they play right now. Stake is the primary target. They just don't want too many AoE rockets on NL. Black Shield gets used early, but because Mithy's playing Alistar, he can afford to do this with the Unbreakable. This gives time. Look, stun to Barrel on Stake. Barrel even misses, because Stake <laughs> doesn't even run. But Mithy's soaking huh? more damage than Stake is. So you're trading support for top laner in these fights, and from that point on, they're winning. But if Flash Wolves finish Zeke's, which they have right Not now. Not even. Oh, they yep, have it. They just have, have right now. Then this slow playstyle where you leave Jinx untouched may actually come to punish you because we're sitting at, you're looking at 90% crit on NL right now. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, 55% for Niels, and there's double Randuin's Omen on the front line here, so it will be fairly hard to cut through those two. 90 when it procs, obviously. You still need to get the Zeke smoke, but that yeah. takes some time, and you usually get it easiest if you just focus on tanks because they make it a lot easier to hit them. And then you can switch to these more priority targets. Niels is also full build. Sivir does a very deceptive amount of damage late into the game, especially now that the team fights are becoming a little bit condensed. Yeah. The Ricochet is hitting many, many targets. If Stake and Carso want to dive together, Niels gets to hit both of them. And really, this game has been controlled by Origin's ability to take care of here we go. Neil's gonna knock down that tier two turret after all the bloodthirster. He's happy to take a few shots and make sure it goes in. As we go 43 minutes into this one. As expected. Yeah, as expected, of course. Love well, it when a stat pans out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's crazy is Origin uh, have about 11,000 gold, roughly, in Baron power plays. If not for the Baron plays that they had, they'd be down like 6k in this game. Like, their ability to make these calls. This is what Europe is known for, by the way, is taking the Barons when there's a dragon up on the map. It's worked out twice now. Yeah, and Freak, I feel like these teams are such a close matchup against each other. 
uh, that this, most of these games will come down Ooh, to very maybe. bold plays and their execution in those precise moments. I don't think this is a matchup where one team just outclasses the other or consistently makes so many super small movements that they win by a landslide. There will be a lot of back and forth games in this series. And as you talk about execution, stake face oh, X. Oh, jeez. <laughs> right before that, though, Maple, he got the black shield. He was ready up to go, launch himself over to all, maybe make a pick, and he had better at the wall as well. And we I kind of... Killed out the entire Peke game. was ready. He had ult Q just to, yep. to prep for it. Either way, we are getting ourselves back into this one. 23 seconds on the next chance for Dragon 5 for Origin. If they get this, they can take Baron during that duration, get both buffs on. There's already two inhibitors dead, so even platforms leaving their base would be hard. Yeah, Dragon 5 is huge here because Origin is actually set up to do so and trying to get in on a zone control the Nivea, who, by the way, has a very timely blue buff, is incredibly difficult. They're trying to pop stakes Meganar before the Dragon fight. That's why you saw Pekka hit him over. But they're now rotated in the position. Yeah. This could be an end of the it's game. It's a classic Origin play. Just when you think they're going for a Dragon, they go for your base. The Everyone is switch. ahead of them. Everyone who's ever on a team with this Pekka knows this move. They're already into the base and Flash goes, go, dude, where's my base? Too late, it's already gone without even getting in game one. Classic Peke Soad shot calling, but it's actually Niels who led the way on that rotation. Everyone was thinking about Dragon 5, but Dragon 5 only helps you kill the Nexus. Why not just kill the Nexus? I love this bait and switch that Origin pulled here, especially game one in the best of five. To, to win a game in this manner just gives you like a mental blow to the Flash Rolls too, because they, yeah. they were, okay, maybe, maybe we can get back into the game. Maybe if we get this Dragon. No, our next is gone. Well, that's the thing. I mean, this is literally three <laughs> objectives in a row that Origin get because of the threat of Dragon 5. Not because of uh. Dragon 5 itself, because everyone cares so much about this. And I mean, just think about the prep these teams do. How much the LMS as a region and the Flashers as a team fight around Dragon every single time. The team that gets Dragon 5 wins every game in that region because everyone always fights over Dragon 5. And if you win the fight, obviously you win the game. And Origin just read them. They're like, yeah, you have, to, you have to care about Dragon 5. We'll take a Baron. We'll take another Baron. We'll take your Nexus. And every time, Flash Rolls go for the same play. Looking at this game, though, we saw a couple of the tendencies coming into the game that we expected confirmed. But we all already saw some changes here mm -hmm. that Origin uh, did in their play. Very much so, the proactive teleports early in the game. This is not something we've seen. They've usually been either second or not teleporting at all. Yeah. But this time, it was good to see them go for these proactive plays. But then the game took the normal turn, where Flash Rolls are just so good at stabilizing and not yeah. looking for more action. I think we saw some of the strengths and weaknesses of both these teams come sure. out pretty strongly in game one. Teleport usage from Origin, but some lackadaisical play in the side lanes, and Flash Wolves showed how well they can absorb. Yep. And then at the end of the day, we got to see Origin back with <laughs> the Nexus. So th what way to, to start this series? It's a great way. It capitalizes all the strengths and weaknesses of both, of both teams. But for an even closer look at that Origin win, let's send it over to our interview lounge with some expert insight. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I'm joined here by the Fish Show and Clement, too, who is a caster for the LMS region and knows the Flash Wolves very, very well. Let's break down this first game, starting with the picks and bans. Because watching, as someone who's watched Origin for a while and um, has watched the Flash Wolves for a while, I was quite surprised at all the power picks given over to the Flash Wolves. Exactly. I think that the um, uh, Flash Wolves got to play exactly what they wanted, and OG didn't use their strength in the purple side. If we look at the group stages, they actually won three games on the purple side, and a huge part of that was giving Soaz split push pressure in the top lane. But this time, they actually let Stake get the Gnar against the Darius matchup, and I think through the middle of that game, we could see the advantage. They didn't have anywhere they could push. And we were talking about this during the game, how this Lulu ban on red side doesn't seem to be necessary against the Flash Wolves because it's Stake who's going to play it on top side, which means there's no front line suddenly for the team, and they rely so much on him being that big tank. We saw him on the Gnar, so I think they should leave that one open. Ban away that LeBlanc from Abel, which was just such a pain for them to deal with. It was just all over the place. Yeah, definitely. And if we step away from the picks, okay, OG had made their bed. And then they start off being very, very aggressive, which is something that we've seen from them a lot in the European LCS. Mm -hmm. Not so much so far on the world stage. How come they weren't able to hold on to their strength there? Because they got the first, but they got the pressure in the bottom lane. I think the main play we have to talk about is the double TP top lane where they got punished very heavily. Amazing was in the bottom of the map and they didn't know that uh, NL was already hanging on their way. So we actually I think have that a rep uh, replay for that one as well uh, to look at that one indeed and uh, we can talk over it. And as you said, Maple, a staple for that team and we see it here once again. 
Yeah, it was just so weird with the way Origin were positioned on the map with always amazing being on the bottom side with the side stone. So they had very few defensive wards. So even though they got ahead at first, we can just roll the clip now. We notice how Mabel has been able to sneak in behind because there's zero wards in this jungle on the top side of the map for Origin. So they're only looking offensive almost. Nils gets caught out of first, has to run away. The double teleport comes in. It worked early in the game for Origin, but look at amazing on your minimap. He's so far away from his team, he's never able to help, and Flashwolves gets to play this team fight where they avoid the burst coming in at first and then can just keep chasing with more and more CC. And honestly, uh, when that fight happened, I thought from knowing how the Flashwolves have played and knowing that they have that power pick, they have a fed Maple on the block, and they have especially the Jinx, I thought it would have been over and the Flashwolves would have been able to clean it out. What do you think? Uh, I think OG really knows what they want to do with their composition. The reason Darius is so strong right now is even if you have a counter matchup in NAR, uh, Darius in the team fights can just go right through him. If he gets enough items, Nar is not tanky enough to hold that front line. So that's exactly what they did. They baited the Baron, they forced him into a team fight and just went through their front. Yeah, and with that, uh, Europe got a little bit of vengeance for the ball's pentakill. We can roll that pentakill from uh, Soaz here. Also on Darius and on the game-changing fight, putting it back in OG's favor. Yeah, really, so for Origin, because they got so many early dragons, they could keep like, forcing Flash Wolves to move down to stop these dragons from stacking up and then always start the Baron in advance. They did it this time around. Flash Wolves comes in super late. ML joins the fight now, and his tank is already dead, or one of the tanks is already down. Oh. And this is where Darius just shines, because once you get that first kill, you get four stacks on the next one. You even heal so much on your Q, one of the nice buffs you got coming into. Well, it's making you even stronger in, the, in these team fights. And it's... Fantastic play by Soas, but also why these teams value Darius so much because he will always be a threat in team fights. On just having a black cleaver, he has enough damage to kill your entire team. Yeah, that, that play was just disgusting, man. Soas, thanks for ruining my world's experience. <laughs> <laughs> game one. Hey, okay, game, game one. For game well, one. <laughs> let's talk about that though. Game one um, from the side of OG. It is very risky to give the Flash Wolves all their power picks and the ones they like to play, but if it pays off in this manner, what will that mean for the next game, knowing that uh, OG will be on the purple side and Flash Wolves, uh, sorry, on the blue side and Flash Wolves on purple? Uh, so you mean like uh, OG on the blue side next time? That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I think the second game is always crucial in this series because if they bring out a new strategy and they're on the blue side, um, uh, the, the other team, when they go back on the red side in the next game, they're, they're not going to have any way to react to it. So. Just read all, fix your champions, thanks. <laughs> well, I, I think looking at this here, because Mordekaiser and uh, Gangplank is banned so often on red side, it meant for, for Origin they couldn't target some of these comfort picks like LeBlanc, like Jinx, possibly even a Tom Kench coming in later, who knows. They should be a lot stronger on blue side. And I think them winning the first game is so huge for this series because, again, blue side where they can now take away these, these comfort picks from Flash Wolves and force them to ban away the, the Gangplank and Mordekaiser should mean that we get a better pick and ban phase, because I honestly felt like Origin lost this pick and ban phase yep. to, to the Flash Wolves. They were just no or so few answers at first to how they could deal with like Jinx and so on, but because they played the early game so well, because they ran Offensive Summoner and Alistar as well, they got the level two all in to kind of shut down the Jinx, buy them some time to get early Dragons, they then used later on to bait these Barons over and over and over. So really them getting four Dragons so quickly was massive by playing so well in the start of the game. They need to really fix that uh, vision control, though, because it also has to be defensive, otherwise you get picked off left and right. Yeah, and Maple, we know that he's great on the Blanc, but he's good on a lot of different champions as well, so we'll see what happens. We have to step away for a minute, but when we come back, the Flash Wolves will take to the Rift and try and tie up the series versus Origin. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. If we pick offensively, the, the series will take a huge turn. Soaz lands the upper hand. Two more attacks will do it. Sword on Sword on Dad. He's going to bleed to death. For another couple of seconds, here comes the team. Snake! Oh, dear. Poaches an egg. He gets some damage on the snake. He has a is still safe. Peke lands his stun. Sword Art goes down. Meganar does almost nothing in stake. It's the second kill of the fight. Origin dropped the Nexus in game one.